Yeah. You're welcome. The floor is yours. Okay. Gambia, my motherland. Mama land, the Gambia. Oh, Gambia, the place of beauty. Oh, Gambia, the place of harmony. Oh, Gambia, the place of peace and love. This Gambia is a peaceful country. We are all one together. We know bad here. Kanuteya. Teri ya funda banko sitanyatu. This Gambia is a peaceful country. We are all one together. We make a peaceful country. When Gambia was colonized, red, white, blue, and green flag was raised. When Gambia again independent, this is when red, white, blue, and green flag was raised. See Gambia, the smiling coast of Africa. Thank you. Wow, this is really amazing. Let's put our hands together for her. Well, Richard, um, tell us what did you learn from this poem? Well, I think that was a really great poem and really well read as well. Well done. Um, very, very nice and a uh, great depiction of Gambia being a, a country of, of peace, harmony and beauty. <laughs> so, do you, are you trying to tell me all what she's saying is right? Well, I think it's a very nice view of, of the Gambia, and I think the Gambia would be very, very happy with it. Um, whether or not reality, it is completely harmonious, uh, I think uh, the listeners would know better than I am. <laughs> okay, no problem. We shall move on to the next guy called um, Amadou. And yes, um, thank you very much for that beautiful poem. We know Gambia is so beautiful, full of mineral resources. And today, to let you know, our topic is all about if agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why is Gambia still behind? Why are Gambians still behind? Um, you can text into 369 Yes, I'm going to dance so the floor is yours. Introduce yourself and tell us where you come from. Okay, good morning, wonderful listeners. Okay, can you introduce? Good morning, wonderful listeners. My name is Amadansu. I'm 13 years of age. I live in Vatu, Bojang Kunda, and I attend the Surabaya Law Music School. Amadou, um, you are very awesome and very superb, very intelligent. Amadou, today, what do you have for us? A poem. You have a poem? Yes. What is the title of that poem? The book. The book. <laughs> okay, the floor is yours. I am a book. I keep all the secrets of the world, but people do not want to read me. Let these good children fear me. When I see them running away from me today, I only stop and laugh at them and say, ha 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 ha. You will surely come and face me tomorrow, for the fear of God is the beginning of ignorance. Read me today and acquire knowledge for your future. Thank you. Wow, this is really amazing. Uh, well, co-host, I invite you to say something. Well, again, very well read. Uh, sounded excellent on air. Uh, I would be very intrigued. Uh, are you referring to a specific book? Okay, so you think um, the poem that he read, um, it's very important? Absolutely. I think reading um, and uh, uh, whether or not it's in this day and age, whether or not it's reading on a book or reading on a computer, nevertheless, the information is there. It is accessible, and if you close your mind to it, then you will, uh, you will not learn. So however you read, um, it, it is important to, to learn as much as you can about uh, not only the country in which you live, uh, but the world at large. I want to ask you one more question. A book and a pen, which one is more important to you? Well, obviously, without a pen, you couldn't write the book. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit of a trick question, Leon. Okay, thank you very much. And yes, um, we shall finally go down to another interesting young girl. She is also beautiful and very young. Listeners, the number to text in is 369 More text messages are coming, but I'm going to read them later. So, yes, um, let's go down to you. Introduce yourself. Tell us your name and where you come from. Good morning, my listeners. Your mic? Okay. Um, can you use the other mic, please? Good morning, wonderful Come closer, come closer. Good morning, wonderful listeners. My name is Marisa Java, a student from Longman Memorial Medalist. Okay, um, how old are you, Maria I am 12 years old. Maria you are 12 years old. Come closer to the mic and leave the mic. You are 12 years old. And what do you think you can do today? Um, what are your dislikes and what are your likes? I like reading books, singing and watching movies. 
Okay. And I dislike boy friendship. You dislike boy friendship. <laughs> Why do you dislike boy friendship? I dislike boy friendship because mm -hmm. when you start boy friendship at a young age, mm -hmm. you might spoil your future at the older age. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what is your advice to the younger ones that are into this boy friendship that you're talking about? My advice is that they should stop boy friendship mm -hmm. until when they are about to get married. Really? Okay, and um, that's quite interesting. Um, Michael, do you have any question for her? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's an interesting point, and um, certainly each culture is very, very different from one another. Okay, we're having a caller. Hello? Hello, good morning. Hello? I'm fine, thank you. What is your name again? My name is Hazrat Jallo. Yes, Miss Hazrat Jallo. Are you listening to the program? Yeah, it's very nice. Thank you very much. And what do you want to add on our program right now? Yeah, nothing. Just uh, con congratulate them and I tell them not to give up. All right, thank you. And they will never give up by the grace of God. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you for calling Ash Hatu. We really appreciate that. Okay, um, yes, um, give us um, your school song, that would be quite interesting, let me hear from you. School song? Yes. Which school are you, first place? Longman. Longman, yes, the floor is yours. Methodist school will shine today, Methodist school will shine. Methodist school will shine today, all along the way. When we are in green and white, don't we look so bright, when the sun goes up. And the sun comes down. Methodist school will shine. Methodist Miss School is the school of my heart, is the unit of friendship and love. We all together as long as we are for the future of the Gambia. Keep hooray for the red and white. Keep hooray for the blue and white. Keep hooray for the green dust of flower. Oh, we, the children of the school, shall help to build a Gambia. Thank you. Wow, this is really amazing. I love that. Let's put our hands together for the military schools. And yes, uh, we use this medium to thank Auntie Agla for um, being so sincere um, for home kids, talent, um, home kids. Um, anytime we need kids from um, long man, you know, that never be a problem. So, Auntie Agla. Um, I'm saying um, a big shout out to you. And of course, not forgetting Uncle Baji. He's also very sincere. We love him so much. So Uncle Baji, thank you very much for motivating kids like them. And yes, um, how do you see that song? Again, a very beautiful, a beautiful song and, and very well sung. I think the, uh, the, the school which you're singing about should be very, very proud. Definitely. Now, let me hear from you, your school song. Okay. Methodist Academy, planted here in Bigama. We will make our school so great that our good work may be seen and may may ado ado. We will always bless the tree. Call it, let us raise and sign. Let us raise our banner high. Let us be like land houses, warning on our dungeon, yeah. Those who are safe on our soul and so safe on their soul. Wow, this is really amazing. Thank you very much. Let me hear from Amadou. And before we go, how did you see her and who Amon is the best? Um, from there, immediately upon um, Amadou's song, and you can compare. But for now, how, how, how was the song? <coughs> Again, a really wonderfully sung, so congratulations. And uh, I think it would be uh, a premature for me to, to, to judge at this stage. <laughs> everybody first. Definitely. So we go down to you. We are the English club, Soto Koidaru. We are the English club, Soto Koidaru. We are the English club, Soto Koidaru. Lawa basic school, basic school. We specialize in dramas, poetry, journalism, debating culture. We are the English club. 
We are the English club, Soto Koidaru. We are the English club, Soto Koidaru, our basic school. Basic school. Thank you. Wow, let's put our hands together for all of you. Put your hands together for when work done. Yes, finally, can you put um, put it together? Okay. Well, I think that the uh, the, the first song and the last song uh, are, are both very, very uh, interesting in so much as they are supporting your academic premises, and uh, I think that's a really wonderful thing. So well done. Um, I think that the the, the middle song, uh, uh, sorry, the first poem, should I say, supporting the Gambia, was, was very simple, but nevertheless a really, really great message. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together. Listen us to text in the number is 36995. And to remind you on our topic is, um, if agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why are Gambians behind? If agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why are Gambians behind? This is going to be the topic. And before we go, let's welcome our listeners by saying, hello, hello. Uh -huh, let's go after the count of two. One, two, three, together. Hello, 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 BM. Hi, 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 children. It's time for your program. It's time for your program. It's time for your program. Join us. We have someone that wanted to join us right now. Well, the number to call is 369-9555. The number to text in is 369-9555. And yes, um, before we go, let me hear from your poem, school poem, uh, national plate, something like that. Let me hear from you one more time, Maria too. It is the combination of government and people working together in unison and harmony, that we leave us to achieve the project that we all desire. We must stand together as one people, with one goal, and move forward as one nation. For if we insist in pursuing our personal goal, without keeping our collective objectives, our responsibility in mind, then indeed we shall be divided, and divided we shall fall. Let us renew those promises that we made to ourselves, and for our country and the time of independence as we enshrine our national anthem. Thank you. Wow, let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Well, listeners, I will ask this question um, before we go. I want to know what is agriculture? What is agriculture? You can call into 369 and 235. What is agriculture? And why is agriculture important? Mention three importance of agriculture. Uh, what is agriculture? Mention free importance of agriculture. What is soil erosion? Soil erosion. We shall go into short musical break, and from there, um, Amadou will give us more of what is agriculture all about. So I think it's very important, right? So we shall we go for in, um, short interview? Absolutely, if you like to, then. Okay, no problem. Yes. We need and love is what we should embrace. Welcome back to Home Kids Talk Show. The program is brought to you by Home Digital FM and um, the members of Youths and Children Advocating for Media Excellence, Yakam. I am the host of the talk show. My name is Musa Trawale, but you are all free to call me BM The Voice. And to remind you on our topic, which says, um, if agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why are Gambians behind? Um, from this point, we shall invite Amadou Danso to tell us um, his speech about agriculture. Amadou Danso, the floor is all yours. Environmental preservation doesn't just mean protecting caught animals in the other side of the world. It is in fact essential to our own survival. If you respond to anything to do with environment, it's who cares? then it might be time for us to consider how important it really is. Agriculture depends on the environment, and we, dep we depend on the agriculture. This is obvious in countries where economic is dependent on the agriculture, but applies to all. A country's wealth might come from something else, but its population needs to eat. Preserving the environment and preventing soil erosion, desertification and flooding in essential, unsustainable, Farming techniques not only impact natural ecosystems, but also ultimately make farming impossible. Secondly, while much of our food comes from agriculture, 
The ozones are also an essential source. Communities worldwide depend upon seafood. Marine conservation is vital to protect human food supplies as well as marine animals. At the moment, there are serious conservation issues affecting the ozone, including overfishing and pollution, which need to be controlled. Thirdly, the human activities impact the climate and this affects all lives. Drought, flood, and extremes of heat and cold are caused by global warming. Some countries are already experiencing the citrus effect, while others it is just for the moment. Because we are not treating our environment with respect and we face the consequences. For example, rainfall is, affected. rainfall is caused by deforestation. Conservation of natural environments should be done, not for their own sake, but for that of the world as a whole. Therefore, the government and the people should work hand in hand to preserve and protect the environment by planting lots of trees in the environment and avoid discriminating cutting down of trees. The government should also make sure that all refuse are managed properly and people should also avoid discriminating dumping of refuse on undersea. In conclusion, I want all the listeners here today to sensitize on how to protect their environments to have a better future. I thank you all. Wow, let's put our hands together for Amanda Danso. And yes, um, Richard, tell me how do you feel and what are the informations that you think um, you cultivate from him and what would be the advice for the Gambians? Well, I think it's... Um Yes. I think it's really good to hear uh, so many very points which are, which are very accurate, particularly on the protection of the oceans, uh, protection of the ecology. Um, all these are absolutely vital and of course the importance not to over farm. Um, I think that's especially important in the Gambia and, and I'll certainly uh, talk about that later. So I, I think you made a really, really good, uh, 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 some great observations there, all of which are accurate, all of which are important. And frankly, uh, I think it's wonderful to be sitting next to a 13-year-old boy who has got such a, a great insight on the difficulties and the concerns and the requirements that are needed for sustainable farming and agriculture and fishing moving forward. Thank you very much and listeners out there to also let you know a lot of people out there are giving out their opinion. I would love to read this point. Um, um, this text message is read by some, uh, let me read. It says, um, good morning mister and your wonderful kids. I just want to thank those kids over there to keep working hard. For sure, success will come. Um, fellow soon and very happy. I'm very happy about your program, Mr. Bakari Jaban Gambian College School of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Um, this other one say, good morning, guys. I'm enjoying your program. Indeed, very interesting. This other one say, good morning, VM. You're the best host ever I have ever had on radio in the Gambia and beyond. And I really love the way you're motivating the kids in the Gambia. Definitely, God will reward you. Thank you very much. Please, um, if you send in your text messages, make sure you write your names. They are also very important. This one say, hi, guys. Um, your program is interesting. I'm already done so along the way. Um, Saneba, they are doing great. Um, I love uh, 13 years old girl too. She's, she's also amazing. Thank you very much. Um, this one says, hi guys. Your program is always interesting and we hope to meet you soon. Keep it up. This one says, hi guys. Your guest is awesome. He spoke directly to the point. <laughs> Thank you very much. We really, uh, we really appreciate it. So what we're going to do um, we're going to have short musical break, then from there we will have a debate. Mm -hmm. So listeners, if you wish to call in, the number is 3699555, 3699555. And don't forget to subscribe us on YouTube. Type the word on YouTube, Y-A-C-A-M-E, Yakam, and start subscribing. Turn your bell so that whenever we upload our videos, you will be able to see it. On that note, we shall go into short musical break. And we'll be right back.
Yes, welcome back once again. Now we're going the, back to the debate section, and we know it's quite interesting in the studio right now. So what we're gonna do, we're going directly to them because we want to know if Gambia is behind or not. And the topic of the discussion is, if agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why are Gambians still behind? Why are Gambians still behind? Do you still believe that Gambians are behind or do you still believe that Gambians are ahead? So we go starting from you. The floor is yours. Good morning, beautiful listeners. We have a debate entitled If Agriculture is the Backbone of, of the Every Nation. If agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why is Gambia behind? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most of this says that Gambia is behind. Okay. Gambia is behind because when we the Gambia grow our own crops in our country. We used to export it to other countries. When we export it to other countries, they used to manufacture it and send back to Gambia. Mm -hmm. When they send it back to Gambia, we the Gambians, we used to take it and sell it to our fellow Gambians in a costly price. Things like granite, rice, maize and goods, etc. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for him. That is He's the first. Uh, she's the first speaker of this debate. Um, listeners, if you wish to call in, the number is three six nine and triple five. Three six nine and triple five. Text into three six nine and triple five. Now the lines are open. You can call into three six nine and triple five, or you can call into six triple nine one three zero or um, two triple nine four eight eight or nine three eight eight four three zero. Yes, we go down to Ahmad Danso. Yes, Ahmad Danso. What is your intake on this debate? I'm not supporting the motion. You are not supporting the motion. Okay, and why? Go ahead, the floor is yours. Why I'm not supporting the motion is because Gambia is not behind, Gambia is going in front. Because, for example, my first point is fishing. Some of our men are in the morning around 4 o'clock. They used to get to go to the river to catch fish. From there, our parents will go to the, to the river, bring that fish, come and sell it from there, and these, those two people, those come to, for this thing. Those who come to collect the tax, they will collect tax from there, they will take it to the government, and the government will take that money, do something that will benefit us. And that means the agriculture is not lacking behind. This, it is still improving and it's still going on. Okay, let me hear from you, finally. I am for the motion. Mm -hmm. The Gambia is lacking behind mm -hmm. because for the fishing part, we the Gambia fish during the daytime. And the daytime, we, do, we don't catch many fish. And for Senegalese, they come during the night, they catch lots of fish, go to their country, sell it, and therefore we the Gambians are lacking behind because they are smarter than us. Okay, now um, I will go back to him and um, to also let you know, I would also like to put this across. Agriculture in the Gambia is not supporting, government is not really supporting farmers. And if you look at um, Rihat, you come to realize that in other parts of the world, Government support farmers in all aspects. Either they give them loans, loans, for example. You know, when you look at it, government is not really supporting. You know, the farmers for them to produce their crops. You know, for the uh, you know for the better. And if you also look at it today in the Gambia, uh, most of our products are not exposed now. The, the government is not really supporting them. So most of the farmers are crying, not because, and Gambia is one of the most beautiful country. When you look at it, Gambia is blessed with fertile, fertile lands. We have a very good fertile land full of uh, manure, uh, yet Gambia cannot produce its own rice, you understand, its own granite, um, its own maize and other stuff like that. So Gambians are still behind to me. What is your point of view on that? Yes, the floor is yours. Okay, no problem. Well, I not think, not this. We we okay, need to discuss. Sure. Well, I think um, I, I think some interesting points were raised, uh, and the first point was very interesting about uh, produce being exported. Uh, and it sounded like a lot of produce was being export exported, which of course then means that food is then needed to be imported in order to feed feed the population. 
Um, and that seems like a bit of an imbalance to me. So I, I think that there's the requirement for balance is very important. The, the need for feeding your people, whilst at the same time uh, finding products uh, to, to grow and export. Um, I, I think your um, points about fishing are, are interesting, are, are correct again. And I, I think it's that you made an interesting observation as well regarding the Senegalese fishing at night. Um, we have a caller. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm very fine. What is your name and where are you calling from? I am Musa Sisi calling from Jambor. Musa Sisi from Jambor. Okay, yes. you are highly welcome on our talk show. Yes, yes, I'm very, very impressed about your program. Thank you very much. And I, and I feel very proud as a Gambian listening to this nice fishing. Okay. But you know, blow fishing is to standing in front of the media and seeing the problem of the nation like agriculture. Mm -hmm. I think it's another achievement for the country. Definitely. And then, and then you know, because they are racing right now, mm -hmm. I think the government or even individuals like companies and other organizations mm -hmm. should be listening to them and take steps towards it. Definitely. And uh, this is democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, transparency, everything you know, you should listen to even a Kickstarter and any other people in this country. Definitely. Thank you very much. I'm proud of them, you know. Thank, Thank you. Thank you them to, uh, to work hard. And, know, and, 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 and before you go, uh, we have lost that caller. Um, the number to call is 369-9555, tell us if agriculture, um, if agriculture is the backbone of every nation, then why are Gambians still behind? Do you still believe that Gambians are behind? Do you think, oh, do you think that agriculture is being promoted? If agriculture is promoted, then you explain to us. If agriculture is not being promoted, you tell us. Because we know that human beings cannot go without agriculture. We have another caller. Hello. Hello. Okay, Mr. Sisi, yes, you're welcome. Yes, you want to ask a question, what was your question? The question is, do you still believe that Gambians are behind, or do you think that they are forward in terms of agriculture? Mm -hmm. Okay, Gambia, I think they are behind still in terms of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Simply because, you know, as we keep to one of those three, you know, we produce, mm -hmm. We start a process, we take it to another nation, we process it, we take it back to Gambia and sell it in higher price. Mm -hmm. That's another difficult thing. Definitely, definitely. So, so that's why I'm finished with that girl, you will be given that time, you know? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate that. All right, um, listeners out there, um, that was um, a very interesting man called Musa. Um, all the way from Jambor. Thank you very much for calling. The number to call is three six nine nine triple five. We want to hear your point of view. Yes, you were saying something. Can you please kindly um, um, continue from where you stopped? Absolutely. Well, I think uh, as I was saying, so it's, uh, all the uh, all the uh, children, or should I say, young adults here today, have raised some interesting points. And uh, it, I, I think I've been here now for maybe twenty one days. Okay. So um, it, it's very interesting to listen to what they have to say, uh, and of course, it's teaching me about some of the uh, some of the practices and some of the things that are going on. And indeed, the, the, the two callers that have just uh, just phoned in have also made some valuable contributions. Definitely. So, so uh, you know, thanks for calling in very much. And uh, it, it's it's very interesting to hear how, how things have been operating in the Gambia. And I have to admit completely that if you are exporting your products to get them processed elsewhere in another country, uh, and then they are re-imported, then, then that's not a very efficient way of doing things. Okay. Um, well, um, Gambians, when you look at it, um, last year, um, most of the farmers were complaining. If you look at Gambia today, we should, we should have moved forward. Gambia, the orange, the oranges are expensive. If you go to the host, um, if you go to the market today, you ask, or oh, how much is the orange? They will tell you one is ten dollars, fifteen dollars, or in fact they will say eight dollars. And those oranges are from Gambia. You understand? Granite the same way is expensive. And these are the things that you know. Whenever we we, we we try to motivate ourselves, we'll be able to move on. Now I will go back to the kids because the debate doesn't complete. Now it's time for you people to against each other. If you think you said agriculture, you, uh, Gambians are still behind. So you have to emphasize it. 
tell us more on that and how tell us more on that. You're welcome. Okay. Why I say that Gambia is still behind because one reason is uh, growing rice. Mm -hmm. When we grow rice in our own country, we used to export it to other countries and they used to manufacture it in their countries and they import it back to Gambia. Mm -hmm. When they import it back to Gambia, it's not we the Gambians used to sell it, but people from other countries like NARS, mm -hmm. they used to sell it. They used to open a big shop and sell it in a costly price. Like, okay. Yeah. And that's not fair. Yeah. That's so you think fair. you think that Gambia can also produce their own rice? Yes. Henceforth, um, every every Gambians eat rice. You think it's important for Gambians to, um, to 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 cultivate rice? Yes. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Um, Amadou, um, are you going against of what she's saying, or are you are you going against her? Yes. Okay. You're welcome. If Gambia if the Gambia agriculture is lacking behind. Then why are the people struggling hard to make the agriculture more active and people are still working hard for it? Mm -hmm. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you. You, you, you need to bring, you need to be, you need to be like, um, you know, the government area is not supporting agriculture if you look at it. Gambian government is not supporting agriculture. You understand? And then Gambians themselves are not also willing to go back to the farm and grow up, grow what they want to eat, you understand? They want to eat from foreign country. So all this has contributed. And then, you know, agriculture is very important. When you look at it, it's very, very important. Every nation, even in the United States of America, you understand, they focus on agriculture. Look at, when you look at it um, um, before um, slavery time, you know, the white people will come in Africa, they will buy slaves from us, exchange us from mirrors, and others, uh, you know, and, and you know, and others, others product. But look at this slave. What are they doing in in, in, in United States or, or in America or in Europe? You know, these people were taken for plantations.